All right, so now that we've added, let's look at subtraction. Subtraction is definitely a different uh, ball game because it really has different rules that you have to follow. You might not think so, but if you want to think of addition and subtraction like two parents, uh, one of those parents would be a really easygoing parent, lets you do pretty much whatever you want. That's addition. But if you have a parent who's really, really strict and has makes you follow the letter of the law, that's subtraction. So really important that you follow the correct procedures here when we're doing subtraction. The first thing I want you to think about is the fact that right here, all right, I'm going to highlight that real quick, right here where that subtraction sign is, is actually a number. And so that number, and then you, most of you might already know this, is that actually that minus is really a negative 1. So because that's a negative 1, we've got to remember to distribute the negative 1 to all terms in this set of parentheses, though. Never distribute the negative 1 to these guys. They're already done. They're fine. You never have to change those. The negative 1 needs to be distributed to this term, to this term, and to this term. So by doing so, that changes pretty much the entire problem. The first part of the problem stays the same. 3x squared plus 5x. Notice I'm going to be doing this one vertically. But when we distribute the negative 1, this becomes negative 7x squared, negative 5x, and positive 12. So now that you've distributed the negative 1, now you simply just combine like terms as you normally would. So I'm actually doing addition, but I'm doing addition because I distributed the negative 1. If you don't distribute the negative 1 first, it's not going to work out. So this ends up giving me negative 4x squared. These terms actually cancel out, and then the positive 12 as well. So there's your answer there. Now, it's probably a bit more common to see it horizontally. So let me show you what that looks like. The 3x squared plus 5x once again stays the same. But then as we distribute the negative 1, it becomes negative 7x squared, negative 5x, and positive 12. And then you're just combining like terms as we normally would. 3x squared with negative 7x squared gives me negative 4x squared. The negative 5x here and the positive 5x, they cancel each other out. So we're simply left with the plus 12 doesn't have anybody. So there's your answer again. So very much the same, but also very different than um, addition. You have to distribute that negative 1. So let's give it a quick shot here. Go ahead and use whichever method you prefer, but remember to set this up first right here. All right, press pause and give that a shot. All right, if we distribute this negative 1 correctly, we now end up with, I'm going to go with the uh, horizontal method. The first three terms never change. So negative 4m cubed minus m plus 9, but my terms here definitely do change. Negative 4m squared, negative m, and positive 12. So now that we're going to combine this together, you got to be careful. These two are not like terms. Those are not like terms because they have different exponents. So don't even think about combining those. So since they're not like terms, we just write them each on their own. So negative 4m cubed minus 4m squared. Remember, standard form, the biggest x when it comes first. Next, we can combine negative m and negative m. It gives me negative 2m. And then we all also can combine positive 9, positive 12. That gives me positive 21. There you go. That's what you should have gotten as your answer for that question. Let's keep rolling. So I want you to take a minute to try these out on your own, see how you do. Um, want to give them your best shot, putting them in uh, standard form, making sure you can name them by their degree and the number of terms. So press pause, give that a quick shot, and see how you do. 
All right, first let's put this in standard form by combining like terms. Those are like terms. So if we do 5x squared minus x squared, that gives me 4x squared. The plus 2x didn't have anybody, neither did the negative 1. So now we're in standard form. Now we can identify the degree and the, and the type of polynomial. Never determine that without uh, before putting in standard form. So our degree is 2, or the second degree, because that's our highest exponent. And then we are a trinomial because we have three terms. 1, 2, 3. Trinomial. All right, here if we combine like terms, these two are like terms. That should have given you 8x minus 2. So now this is a, our degree is 1. Our degree is 1 because there's an invisible 1 there. And this is a binomial. It only has two terms. Okay, so last but not least, if we're putting these, if we're adding these together, simply look for those like terms. So 5r squared, excuse me, 5r cubed plus 6r cubed gives me 11r cubed. And then positive 8 plus 3 gives me 11 as well. So very easy there with the sum. Remember, that's the parent who lets you do whatever you want. Subtraction, though, not so, quite so quick. you got to be distribute the negative 1 first. So x squared minus 2 stays the same. But then negative 3x and negative 5 distribute. So now we can combine like terms. The x squared doesn't have anybody. The negative 3x doesn't have anybody. But the negative 2 and the negative 5 combine to make negative 7. So there you go. There's a good little lesson check.